Good afternoon, everybody. It is round three of the Falls Rock Super Six. And to bring down the curtain on another cracking weekend of Championship Rugby, we are in Edinburgh today. A Capital City showdown is on the menu between two of the country's most famous rugby institutions. It's Heriot's Rugby against Watsonians at Goldenacre. Well, this has the makings of a real cracker, Watsonians. The only team to take maximum points from their opening two fixtures. Bonus point victories over the Southern Knights and defending champions, the Ayrshire Bulls. Heriot's put up a good showing against the Bulls down at Milbrae in round one, but they were handsome winners last weekend away to Stirling Bulls. This, their first home fixture of the competition. Well, joining us for this feast of Saturday afternoon rugby is Bruce Miller, fresh from coaching Watsonians women, Bruce, as well. Uh, this is a, a mouth-watering clash to finish round three of the Super Six. I have been looking forward to this one all week. Two teams that, that will just go out and, and entertain us, I have absolutely no doubt about that. There are, there are some in Scottish rugby we'd consider Heriot's to be the most entertaining team in this Super Six competition. Uh, and for me, Watsonians are the most complete team. They've got a pack that can then cope that can cope with any pack in the competition. They've got a, a back line who can run hard when need be with the, the likes of Lewis Berg, and and then they can throw the ball about when you've got guys like Harry Patterson and, and Logan McPherson out there as well. So they, they, they've got everything, but um, Heriot's at home will be a handful. Yeah, you and I sat and watched Heriot's at Bridge Hawk last weekend. They really did deal pretty comprehensively with everything Sterling Wolves threw at them. How impressed it have you been? with their start to the season, particularly when you look at the, the tries they scored, the way they cut Sterling open off, off kick transition and the dominance they had at the set piece. Yes, they, they, they really played a varied game, I think was probably what we commented on most last week. Um, you know, they, Even when they're playing within the forwards, they don't just take that obvious pass, they, they, they keep, uh, keep the defence guessing. And they led, remember, at half-time down at, uh, at Milbrae, not an easy place to go. I think it was 17-14 at half-time. They then didn't score a point in the second half. But they played some, some good rugby. They wouldn't be too upset, I don't think. And then, as you say, they, they comprehensively dismantled Stirling Wolves last week with, again, a very complete performance. Uh, and, and they had dominance at the set-piece as, as well. They will be challenged more today by Watsonian, so that will be one of the key factors. Can they... Can they even if it's just parity, that will allow them a, a, a decent platform to, to play off. Yeah, Watsonians, well, of course, were Sprint Series champions. They romped to the title, winning seven from seven. Today, up against Heriot's in their own backyard at Goldenacre. This is how things finished earlier in round three. Last night, Sterling Wolves losing to the Southern Knights, their first win of the season, and a really morale-boosting victory for Bruce Ruthven's team at Bridge Hall. The Ayrshire Bulls as well, bouncing back from a, a defeat to Watsonians themselves last weekend with a 49-7 thrashing of Muir Bears. They were previously unbeaten, the Bears, heading into round two, but it is now just Watsonians who have yet to lose in the championship so far. The stage is set. It is a very finely poised encounter between these two Edinburgh rivals. Bruce, a, a word on Watsonians, you, you have a bit of involvement with the club through the, the women's team. What makes it such a such a strong rugby unit, this Super 6 team? Well, they're obviously very well coached um, and they, they, they just seem to know what they're doing. Um, you know, as a, as a unit, the um, the back line, as I say, their, their, their selections allow them to play that, that hard-running game I mentioned already. Guys like Lewis Berg, who, interestingly, the last time these two teams met, um, it was actually at Megatland, but it was a, it was a home game for Watsonians, but um, Meyerside was unavailable, and they, they played at Megatland, and, and they were trailing at half-time. Uh, and I think it was a man that's on the, the bench today, Joe Reynolds, came on, and he really turned the game around. But the, the, the Lewis Berg, I think, scored two tries and, and just was that, you know, give me the ball and I will run through a brick wall. Uh, but they also scored an unbelievable try from their, from their goal line, which I think Loman McPherson started on his own goal line and, and finished himself on the diagonally opposite corner. And um, so I say they've, they've just... They've got um, they've got so many ways that they, they can attack you, you're just never quite sure where the next punch is coming from. Yeah, it will be fascinating to see how this one unfolds. Let us then take a quick run through the lineups, and unsurprisingly, Heriot's coaches Stuart Edwards and Finn Gillis naming an unchanged pack 
after decimating Sterling up front. Dan Gamble, superb in the scrummage, retaining his place at tight head, with Rudy Leishman again capturing the team from the second row. That allows try scorer Lewis Govanlock to continue at six, making his tenth appearance at this level. Jack Mann wearing eight was player of the match in Stirling for the fabulous two try display. The home back line brimming with sevens flair. Three Scotland internationals in there with Jacob Henry making his first appearance since bagging four tries for Scotland at the Commonwealth Games. Sam Pecure and Niall Godsmart no longer in the national squad but have shown up very well in the opening two rounds of the Super Six. The Gelderbloom Houston half back axis is working to great effect and although Dan King was helped off injured last weekend, he is fit to start again at fullback. Rory Steele, though, pulled up with cramp, scoring the final try against Sterling and misses out today. Plenty of experience on that home bench as well, with Michael Linus, Fraser Hasty, and Ross Jones, all very seasoned campaigners. Well, for the league leaders, Bobby Bratton starts at tight head prop in the only change to Fergus Pringle's pack that took on the Bulls last Saturday. Gregor Skugel drops to the bench to make way for Bratton alongside his fit against Scotland under-20s colleague Cole Lamberton. It is a formidable pack with Louis Ball and Quagga van Niekerk bringing a hard edge in the boiler house, long-serving Ian Moody wearing number eight, and Seb Cecil and Carl Main, two very, very effective flankers when it comes to scavenging and breaking tackles. It is a very interesting backline, this named by Pringle. Two fly-halves in the same team with Jason Baggett at 10 and club captain Lee Miller deployed at 12 in place of the injured Connor Eastgate. That Baggett-Miller playmaking combination could be very productive for Watsonians indeed. So much nous between those two experienced professional players. Rory Brand too has a sizeable helping of professional experience as well. He's at scrum half today in place of Murray Scott. So an excellent 9-10-12 axis with a powerful and aforementioned Lewis Berg outside them and pace of plenty in Loman McPherson, Angus Guthrie and Harry Patterson. Wiley New Zealander Joe Reynolds is back on the bench today alongside Dominic Kutzer. Jimmy Beresford also returns to the match the 23 as the replacement lock. Well, Bruce, that is a, an interesting Watsonian setup. That 10-12 that partnership really, well not partnership, but relationship really jumps out to me as two guys who could have a, a real bearing on how this one pans out. Yes, and it's not the first time they've done that. I think Lee Miller was was introduced at, um, in his second or, or the second or third game in the sprint series at, uh, at outside centre, and it gives you you know coaches they will, they will try and create a two sided attack, and it makes it easy to do that when you've got somebody like Jason Baggett and Lee Miller in the in the same team. They can jump in at first receiver on on either side of the breakdown when we get um, into the, the centre of the field. So that that's certainly an area to watch. But actually, when you look down, it's often easy when you look down the team sheets to pick out matchups that head to heads but actually it's really hard today because everywhere you look it, it's an interesting one the, the, the front rows I mean we've already said that Watsonians um, have, a, have a dominant scrum but actually Chris Keane and Dan Gamble were superb I thought in the front row last week likewise in the second row and then that back row we, we picked Jack Mann as our Forge Rock Super 6 player of the match last week and, and we spoke about the, you know, the possibility of him moving on to a higher level. You've got to produce back-to-back -back performances. You can't just stand out in one game. So I'm looking to see how Jack Mann does today against a wily old campaigner in Ian Moody, uh, who knows everything there is to know about the number eight play uh, alongside Carl Main and Seb Cecil, Govanlock and Wilson in the back row for Herrick. So everywhere you look and in the centres, there really are some, some fascinating matchups. Bruce Houston and Jason Baggett, though, could be the one that decides the game. Yeah, so many eye-catching duels across the paddock today as Watsonians emerge into the golden acre sunshine. They come here in rampant form, played to one, two, try bonus points too. And they are on the hunt for a third win on the bounce and a twelfth, remarkably, in all competitions, stretching back to last year's championship. But this though was Heriot's patch. It is their first home game since the 11th of June and Buramuir Bears were put to the sword at Golden Acre. Andrew Leishman walks out his troops for what will be a, a special occasion and surely an entertaining Super 6 contest in the offing as well. Edinburgh bragging rights at stake in this one too, don't forget. And we have perfect conditions for a game of exciting rugby 
And let's hope we get the fair to match. There is Ian Kenny, our Irish official. And he's worked on matches across the under-26 nations and South Good Africa's storied line, guys, yeah. Craven Week schools competition. Hold on, is it? If you believe his Wikipedia page, he's a highly unsuccessful amateur wrestler as well, although I suspect that Good could be go, one of his pals editing for comedic effects. Right, no, problem. no problem at all. Ready? But he is one of Scottish Rugby's Three. premier officials Ready. as well. <laughs> so here we go then. An Edinburgh grudge match to savour. To end Fosrock Super 6 round three. Elliot's in the hoops. Watsonians in the navy blue. Running from left to right. Watson's have the line, please. Watson's on the line. A strong clearing kick and a first throw for Cammy Fenton. And by and large, was solid at line out time last weekend. A couple of crooked throws just before he was brought off against Sterling. And he finds Captain Leishman with his first one. And they him away for Houston. That's Mark in midfield. On by Brown to King. Stop, Eddie, Eddie, stop. And this hey, will stop. chase Watsonians back. Penalty advantage, Eddie. Get him off. Get him off. Jackman was offside there, so Watsonians hey. will have the first penalty of the match. He's in front of the kick. By about five yards. Just here. Well, we spoke last week about teams maybe Number playing eight. too much Flying in their, their own half and from the restart, so it was good to see Watsonians just catch that and send it up the touchline, no, but Perry gets adventurous back. from the off, from the line out, a little bit of movement, just enough to um, make ball. it an easy easy jump and take, and then they threw the ball wide, and just as you say, Jack Mann find himself Someone offside. Right. Not a good start Here we go, guys. for Harriet's. Number eight, offside. Yeah. yeah, we've seen matches in the Super 6 where Teams play with great abandon, great ambition, but this one I think will have the feel of a, I don't want to say have more professional, but almost way. more more pragmatic in, in its approach. Two very well-drilled teams, two teams who, yeah, who on the play line, in the style of what you would expect of a, a fully professional unit. I, yeah, I, I think that's absolutely right. Um, it's all very well saying we'll go out, we'll throw the ball about and we'll entertain, but... You've, you've got to balance that with pragmatism, as you, as you say, and uh, and sometimes that means just getting territory in the, the other end of the pitch. But here go Watsonians. Yep, Miller into Berg. That's a powerful run from the outside centre. There's a big old unit, Lewis Berg. Brand trying to draw the penalty from Cammy Fenton. And he'll snipe himself from the London Irish and London Scottish scrum half. Alison Courtney, the Edinburgh rugby prop, next to charge. Baggett, Miller at second receiver, and they go Guthrie lurking. Ah, I played it, Brand. Tackle, guys. Brand. Penalty advantage, two offside. Powerful charge from Fanny Kirk. Where's the mark? Over here. Yeah, Ian Kenny will bring them back for the penalty, although Rory Brand. Guys, Mark's over here. it was. <laughs> from that spot on the left rather than the original mark. Penalty, man. That's good from Watsonians. Oh, oh, the actual ball. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yes, good Time play off, again. Looking to to get out into the the wide channels. Number two and offside. Harriet's just creeping up offside. Post As Watsonians look to play through the forwards, I was actually just going to say I thought they, they came up awfully, don't worry, right? a little bit dog-legged. Harriet's. There were two or three of them came up quickly, and two or three of them stood hey, still. Time on, guys. But, uh, that's maybe call. why I think um, the hooker had come up just a little bit too quickly. Cami Fenton. Good feet earlier in the movement from Harrison Courtney. You mentioned Emma Rugby, I think, was the player of the match last week Number as well. And, and more and more in the modern game, props. Oh, We've been speaking about this for years since David Soule played. No, you seems to be back going back, but, I, but more and more in, in, um, in the last two or three years, we see how mobile the, uh, the props have to be. Well, first opportunity for points, and it falls to Watsonian's captain, Lee Miller. The northeast boy from the Elgin area. Spells with London Scottish and Gala. Very experienced player. And very proficient from the tee as well. Red and white Drills please, it like through. Good. With real aprom does Miller. Red and, and Watsonians lead after four minutes. One of the most reliable kickers anywhere, Lee Miller, you mentioned, come down from the, the northeast. I think he came down to do Richie Gray's rugby course at, the, at Borders College. I don't touch the ball. Uh, played for Gala, played in their cup-winning side. 
You boys are the experts at that kind of thing. And then uh, went on to, to play professional rugby, and you can see he brings a very professional approach to the game. Yeah, some good rugby stock as well. His father, Brian, was a, a stalwart of the, the Murray Rugby Club. Still participates full-bloodedly in walking touch, I'm led to believe. And he coached plenty of young men, myself included, up in Elgin. Yeah, still strutting Huge, stuff please, semi pro level. Brand clears. Yeah, we'll have another decent attacking field position from this line out. Pressure from Lewis Govanlock as well. He switched sides of the ruck and saw what was going to happen. Ian, Ian, Moody, step off. Come on. Stop winding him up. Stop winding him up. <laughs> I think he's, <laughs> he's fighting a losing cause there, the referee. That's going to happen all game. Wilson and Moody, 33 and 34, going at each other. Not well, the best of passes from Gelder Bloom. And it's for the cover. Here's Wilson. Inside ball to King. Called that from a long way out. Sonian's closed the door just in time. Did they actually score more points than what Sonian's during the sprint series. They ended up in fourth position. And Sonian's champions with seven wins from seven this is kyle brown from the english championship center well, they'll eventually find sadak brought down by cecil Gilderdoom. houston jack mann trying to get that piston-like handoff going this is mounting for harriet's rugby gamble Gilderdoom. See that at first receiver. Sonian's defending this pretty well so far. Houston trying to cleave them open. Perhaps a chance down the far side. And scurrying away they go. Work from Henry. Leishman the skipper. Come too manfully by Cecil. Best attacking position of the opening few minutes is Houston on the run around. God's mark. Can they get away from Berg? And then a nasty collision involving Ian Moody took a real sore one to the head as he went to tackle. Here's Houston, Govanlock. The first try at Bridgeford last weekend. But it's been pilfered though, Carl Mayne all over it. And Cecil hoovers it up for Watsonians. And that is a big defensive set from the visitors. A big psychological blow as well. And Baggett hoofs it away. Here's Sam Picure, 66 appearances for Scotland Sevens, very slippery customer. He's not slipping no, through the clutches of Cal Davis. Fenton's carry. Campbell on his own. Sonians will fancy their chances. Campbell shoveled it back really well. Speaking of shoveling, not the best pass from Gilderbloom again, and King has to clear it away. It does bounce just before crossing touch. But that for Watsonians, Bruce, will be a, no, no, a morale boosting set. They absorbed some, well, some pretty you. big punches there well, and they came out I'll on top. The to they him. did because we're, we're getting everything we, around, we said we, we expected sure from Heriot. The, the variety in their Time game there in the attack man, right? was superb. But Watsonians just yeah, soaked it up, kept making their tackles, kept organising themselves in, in defence. A big hit came in, as you said, in commentary from Ian Moody and got a bit of a, a crack on the head. He seems to be okay to go, and I think we, we imagine it's it's going to be um, head injury assessment, perhaps concussion every time we see a, a head knock, but sometimes just literally that. It's just a, a bang head, and he looked like he'd taken a sore one. But, uh, but yes, great, great from from both sides. Very inventive from Heriot's from the from the line out in the side. The eleven play when they've one phase to the right and then one phase coming back. And um, I think it was Ian Wilson just dropped the ball inside and there's a hint of a gap. But Watsonians dealt well with it and they get a chance with the ball in hand now. That's through the mark. Penalty collapsing. Six wide. It's the third penalty Heriot's have conceded in this opening eight minutes. It's Brand. It's back to Baggett who jinx. He's legal, guys. Coming There's no here, so Ian Kenny will bring them back. It's yourself. You just collapse onto your bum and collapse. Okay. Part of the line out, Bob's win 15, yeah? Number six, collapsing. Three pretty soft Thank infringements you. from a Harriet's point of view. Offside, collapsing them all. 
in front of the kicker, Jack Mann. Just a little bit clumsy from a discipline point of view. Yeah, that'll frustrate the coaches. And again, they just they find themselves, well, that's not the best of kicks, but they Harris should find the themselves ball. just about in their yeah, in their yeah. half. But they've yeah, had the better, and from an attacking point of view, they've had the, the better of the opening nine minutes. And if you remember, we said last week, although the, the tries came a little bit easier than, than they should have against Sterling Wolves, we, we said that they, they missed two or three opportunities and they're the kind of chances you need to take against sides like, like Watsonians. Clean line out from Watsonians. And out the back they go to Baggett. Good tackle. And Lewis Berg. Davis barreling into contact. And Baggett. Miller steps inside. Ian Wilson, Ian Moody, I beg your pardon, trying really hard to win that back. Ian Wilson of Herriot's making a nuisance of himself. And there is the penalty. was Cammy Fenton over ball that time. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, just Turn a hint of space Thank down you. that stand side, but you can see the position Cammy Fenton has got himself into there. Great work by the Heriots hooker. Sure. And the modern day hooker, we spoke about the, the proper now they have to carry. Yeah. The modern day hooker is, is often one of the, the best proponents of that kind of thing. Get hands on the ball. Short, stocky, very, very hard to move. Time's off. Young Dan King is in the wars again. He was have, replaced in the first half at Bridgehawk last weekend. Didn't look too clever coming off, but he is fit enough to start to today. To the it looks like he needs a little bit of patching up already that. in this one. Still just 18 years old. Yeah, well you went for the 19 sack in, in October. I can see what you're trying to do. Used to be a player with a, a bit obvious when That was JP Doyle there on the, the left hand side of your picture wearing the the Maverick style sunglasses, Scottish Rugby's lead in the refereeing department, former international referee himself, you you were too, you were too quick. monitoring Ian outside. Kenny and his team you were, you officials the today. <laughs> impressed by your sunglasses <laughs> recognition game. You can't beat a pair of aviators on a day like this. <laughs> Yeah, JP Doyle has been a, a big appointment for Scottish Rugby. Just where the ball was, please. A lot of work with yeah. the, the refereeing department and also the, the officials further down the amateur pyramid as well. And it is Houston then for Heriots who can Thanks, Sam. pill for plenty of yards down that far side. Heriots can come again. So Fenton's throw, oh that was interesting, I don't think that was intentional and it's also not allowed because you can't dummy the throw. bit scrappy from the heavy set piece. Well I learned my lesson from last week when I think I said he's thrown a bit excellent and he, he then missed his very next throw. So I didn't say anything there but I was going to say that um, I expected he would, he would hit his man and, uh, and I'm glad I didn't because he made a right hash of that. Well, it, it wasn't just, the, it's not just the hooker ever to blame there. There's there just a lack of communication in the line out. Good work with the ball from Watsonians again, nearly pinching that, but for Jack Mann's clean. Houston sends it long. And it's a good pressure leaving kick from Bruce Houston. He is such an assured presence at 10 for Heriots. He's been one of the standout players in the first couple of rounds of the Super Six. Another in. Now guys will play. He's just again. so we'll calm play. and collected there and we'll he got the perfect play, angle on his on his kick because Rory Brand was hovering to He's try and keep the ball in at, uh, because of the angle that it, it was kicked at. Playing, guys. Left Brand with Stand no chance. Cammy Fenton wanted a rest. Ian Kenny, the referee, was having none of it. So Cecil Juggles uh, did just, in fact, it was a sprint throw. So right. neither hooker having much joy. Option. That line out time, and Heriots go for the scrummage. It's been a pretty cagey opening this, we haven't seen either team really able to unleash the, the serious weaponry in their back lines. No, in the first five or six minutes I thought we were going to get get that because there was a hint of it from Heriots really I think in their first possession and, uh, and likewise Watsonians in theirs. But 
There's just been two or three penalties since then, some mistakes. The line out for both sides just looking a little bit shaky. This will be one of the, the real areas of trench warfare in this game, the scrummage. Two of the most formidable packs in the competition. And it's not shifting an awful lot there. Really good contest. Man, Gelder Bloom away. Houston, this is Picure trying to free the hands and release Brown. Gelder Bloom again. Houston went for the grubber. Could yet work for Harriet as Gelder Bloom picks it off his bootlaces, then gets his pocket picked by Ian Moody. Davis for Watsonians. Drops the shoulder for support on the inside. Brand. Miller away. There is so little between these teams, and that has been evident in this opening 14 minutes. Clever kick. Very clever kick. 50 22. That is a flopper. It was Bruce Houston, surprise, surprise, who arrowed this into touch. Doesn't get much better than that. They've got a cracking kicking game, Heriots and Watsonians will just have to be careful how much ball they give them there. They've done well initially from the, the transition, just put it along two or three sets of hands. Carl Davis got them on the front foot to set the platform for the kick and they deliberately kept it in field, but uh, you now see what Bruce Houston can do with the return. Yeah, no, that was grass. I know it's fine. This time it's better at line-out time for Heriots. That's dangerous, we can't play it on. Look at the position you're in, Seb. Look at the position you're in, okay? Yeah, poor old Ian Wilson was, um, was being hoisted about six feet in the air. And the penalty goes against Watsonians. Dangerous play. And Houston wants to pop this into the corner again. You can't take him I know, yeah, but you just look at the weird position he went up and that's obviously not safe. We can't have it. I mean, Seb Cecil's just <laughs> hit that. There's, there, there's the race, obviously, to get into position at the, the line out mall, and, and Seb Cecil's just stuck his head, and it's gone it's right like underneath between the, between the legs of Ian Wilson. He's just, he's just lifted him up. It's like me carrying my five year old home from school. <laughs> Thankfully, he's smaller than Ian Wilson. Here you come Heriots with them all, peeling off down the blind side. Have they got the ball down? Ian Kenny taking a close look, they haven't. Good work from Watsonians to salvage what looked like a forlorn situation. And they will have the goal line drop. It was good work by Herrits. I'm just watching the way they, they, they didn't set up in the, the way that the defence would have expected. And then rather than getting the ball to the back to the hooker, they, they took it down that left-hand side, getting the ball into the hands of Jack Mann, and we saw last week how difficult he can be to stop in those situations. So, good work initially by Heriots, but good defence by Watsonians, and of course with the, the change in the laws, rather than Heriots getting themselves a, a scrum five and still being on the attack, they will receive this from a, a goal line dropout. Which Baggett dispatches into the capital city sky. Sam Picure, two tries in the opening weekend down in Alloway. He's dealt with manfully by Carl Main. For the room for Fenton. Powerful charge from the hooker. Houston. God's mark. Flips that away nicely. Brown. Jake Henry. And it will be keen to get their sevens game breaker into the game more often. Gelder Bloom. Oh, Fenton collects it well. On the run around is Houston. Now Procure can shift it on to Mann, who just juggles it forward. And there it is, Harry Patterson who can bring it away for Watsonians. Clatter followed by Fanny Kirk. Watsonians could move this here, there is a chance on the counter. Miller, lovely floated pass. And away goes Guthrie. Bergen Miller in support. Miller has to get Jake Henry out of there. Carl Davis. And it goes from Baggett. Very difficult conditions for those chasing these long kicks, but Bruce Houston all over it. Wonderful skill from Houston. Procure into God's mark. Down by Fanny Kirk and Main. Gilderbloom is looking blind. 
Has to introduce Fenton instead. Much of the game has been played in this middle third, but now perhaps it might open up through the middle for Gelderbloom. And it's have the penalty up their sleeve, should they need it. Chance for Leishman to shift it. It's all a bit untidy. And Ross Jones, who's just come on for Dan King, scoops it up. We will go back for that Watsonians yeah, for infringement. Good defence again by Watsonians, and they organise themselves well, but in, in trying to maintain width in your defence, you sometimes just leave a bit of a gap round the ruck, and that's exactly what happened there. Heriots were alert to it. And there was a half break you and that resulted in a penalty. Right? Okay. Heriots just, just got the upper hand here, but not able to get themselves on the scoreboard. Very, very close with their driving line out a moment or two ago. And Bruce Houston will look to get his side into a similar position here. Oh, he's overcooked it though. Yeah, he's put it dead. A rare mistake from Houston. Watsonians off the hook. And they will have the scrum back from where he kicked it. Yeah, just trying to be a bit greedy. I, I suspect he had in his mind exactly what I did, that if he could get his side to within five, that uh, they had another great chance to score. That's, uh, that's careless from the Irishman. And again, it goes back to what we said about Herriots. They, they can play some lovely rugby, but if you don't quite have that, that clinical edge and take your chances when they come up, you know that sides like Watsonians absolutely will. They've had very little chance, but, but you just you just know that when they do, they will punish you. Is that the sign of a team still finding its way under new coaches, still figuring out how it wants to play, everyone knowing their roles, and just bedding into a new system? Or am I, I giving them a little bit too much leeway and really these chances should be finished? Uh, yes, I would go with option two there. I, I think those chances should be finished. I, I don't think you can blame any of that on, on the change. I, I think it, it, you can see the changes the coaches have made, and I, and I love the way they're playing the rugby. And I think that comes down to the players on the on the pitch, whether well, it's just you know split second decisions and, and maybe taking the the wrong one or, or a bit of carelessness and you know, a little handling mistake or, or whatever it might be. Just when you should be you should be scoring. I mean, they really should have scored from that uh, line out two or three minutes ago and we had the same last week I think there were three chances they, they didn't take that to be a, a, a champion side you've got to take Set. it's a good platform this for Watsonians Brand bag it holding down that touchline there's an awful lot of space back there but Dan King Covered it well and called for the mark. His blood on the yeah. reversal for Ross Jones now complete. And he's back with us. <laughs> Ooh, McPherson's lost that one, and Govanlock. He wanted to play the advantage, couldn't quite get it. But that is a big yardage gain for Heriots off the back of that. King clearance. Forward, yeah, just a, a mix up in communication. I mean, Loman McPherson was under it. You can see Jason Baggett just to the left of your picture there, and, and he shouted and he seemed to, to put McPherson off. And McPherson was in a perfect position, and you could see he glanced across towards Baggett when Baggett shouted. And I think Baggett was just telling him it was, it was his ball, but by which point he'd, he'd lost sight of it, lost his concentration. And, uh, and dropped it, so yeah, just a mix up between the, the 10 and the 14 for Watsonians. Top young player is Loman McPherson. He's had to battle Five. through a couple of very serious injuries that have Six. stunted his progress towards the pro game. And will be on the radar of the, the professional ten. coaches at Edinburgh and Glasgow Warriors. Here's Gelderbloom. God's mark. And cut down in midfield. Sadak now. A good step from the towering second row, one of the tallest men in the competition. Gelderbloom, King stepping in at 10. And then it goes through the hands of Leishman. No, line out. Line. And there was space for Henry to try and scuttle clear down the blind side. Out, guys, Again, the hand the the pitch, not quite slick line. enough for Heriots. And Sam Pecura's done himself a mischief. Heriots just trying to be a little more direct there, and it didn't work for them. Met with Any some force by that Watsonian's defence in the midfield, couldn't quite get across the. <laughs> The game yeah, line really nice and, uh, and, and previous launches from set piece have generally gone out the back. They've had, had short, you know, runners 
running that screen line and they've, they've typically gone out the back and gone wide and tried to hit it up in the midfield there, knocked back and I think it was maybe Pecure that, that carried the ball and there's, uh, looks like he's done his, a knee perhaps, he's, he's done something too and, and then again as they, they played off to the, the right, he's trying to be more direct and that Watsonian's defence just laps up. Really, really positive. These, uh, these really runners. Good. Thank you very much. Looks like that's the end of yeah, Pecure's day, in fact. Yeah, yeah, he is trudging off towards the main I, I know, stand exactly here at Golden Acre. Exactly Ross Jones and Fraser Jones on the, line. On the bench line it, yes. for the Heritage Rugby. And Time on, guys. Pecure is going off, and it is Fraser Jones wearing 23 who's come it. on. 20 year olds who can play across the back three, but he is more of a, an out and out winger than Ross Jones, who's typically a full back. He's part of the Sale Sharks Academy, Fraser Jones. So he's on for Pecure. Big loss that for Heriots. As Watsoni has come forward through Maine. Brand injecting some tempo. Lovely handling from Miller. And away goes Berg, barreling forwards. It's Guthrie. Brand again. Brilliant continuity from Watsonians. That was Cecil on the charge. Main, Davis, Baggett ghosting forwards. Bergen supports. It's as dangerous as what Sonians have looked all game. Harrison Courtney, try scorer last weekend, takes it on further. Fenneker goes in to help. Brand, Baggett, Miller. Berg again, big shoulder. A powerful carry from Ian Moody. Cecil, the vice captain points the way. Ferson off his wing, looking for work. Brand again, Patterson, he freed the hands and does just about work out for Watsonians. And he goes in. Brand, Carl Main, that's an impactful carry from Main. He's he's pinned in. Brand has to dig that one out. Baggett switch sides here. There's the goose step in the arc. Wanted to release Miller, couldn't quite. Glorious position this for the visitors. The unbeaten league leaders. Smell Harriet's blood right now. Louis Ball, a German age grade international. In the shadow of the home posts. Brand van Niekerk. The South African inches Watsonians closer. Berg straightening. Dipping the shoulder into Wilson. Still it's there for Brand. Patterson running out to in. Oh, big clear out coming in from Henry. A legal one, but... But... No, it wasn't legal. So Watsonians with a penalty advantage after Bratton. Squeeze a little bit closer. They're right on the line. Can they smuggle the ball onto that white paint? Brand, big looping pass, and it's a run in for Berg. Very well worked Watsonians try. They punched and punched and punched. And then a little one two combination from Brand and Berg. And we have the game's first try. And therein lies the difference between the sides who have just said that Heriots had most of the game up till now, hadn't been able to make anything of it. Watsonians get their one chance, go through umpteen phases. And they picked their moment to go wide perfectly. And he saw where the space was. A lovely pass out from Brand out to Lewis Berg. Great work by the forwards in the, the lead up as well. Some some lovely interplay at the start of the, the movement between forwards and backs. The support play, the short passing. And very accurate at their own breakdown. So they just looked like they could they could go through phase after phase. Never being threatened by the Heriot's defence at, at the breakdown. And it resulted in a wonderful try for Lewis Berg out wide on the right. Yeah, second try of the season for Lewis Berg. He is a mighty specimen. Scotland Age Grade honours to his name. And this would be a rather mighty conversion from Lee Miller. Not quite, just short. A little wide, but that is a big blow for Watsonians. Heriots have had the better of this contest. Yeah, he's on his way, one opportunity on. for the league leaders, yeah, it turns off, and they seize it by the scruff. Lewis Berg, another 
man who played at Gala, but I think I'm right in saying that he arrived at Gala the year that Lee Miller left, so I don't think they would ever play together in the uh, the maroon jersey. They're certainly combining well in the midfield today for Watsonians. He's off the pitch, so we can't wait for him. As I said before, he turned the game well, with the help of Joe Reynolds when he came off the bench um, as, as they, they fought back against Herrits in the second half. But two tries for Lewis Berg that day. He really does take a bit of stopping when he's got his hands in the ball. And there's another who's probably just been on the cusp of pro rugby over the years. And that is a, a sloppy restart from Watsonians. We praised their, their slickness in attack, but a mix-up. Ian Moody well, involved, well, clashing with the teammates. Knocked forward into touch, and Heriots have opted for line out rather than scrum. Time's off again, guys. At least, uh, Ian Moody looks like he's, yeah, he's just struggling a little bit there. I can see he's got one eye closed, and he's just got it, and his, his head, yeah, the, the, the knock that he took earlier, but I can yeah, see he's got an eye closed there as well, and he's, he's just. Um, He's not perfect here, is that the physio one? Just, I mean, they want to keep him on because he, he's, he's having a good game. We do apologise, by the way, if you heard any uh, foul language over our referees or effects mics during this live rugby match. Tampers do get heated during the games. Now, Heriot's. Looking to respond almost immediately, Fenton breaks away. He's just about held by Courtney. Wilson. Merritts have not made enough of these opportunities. Govanlock, Scotland Students International. Ten metres or so out, Jack Mann reduces that figure. Such a big player for the home side, Jack Mann. Gelder Bloom, Houston, Godsmark, sandwiched in the tackle, it's Lewis Berg, 13 on 13. Gelder Bloom introduces Gamble. Again, Courtney with a tackle on his Edinburgh colleague, Fenton. Good footwork from Fenton, rolled the first tackle. Gelder Bloom for Captain Leishman, shoveled inside to Chris Keane. What's only in standing firm that the slow punching effect is not causing them too many problems. Man the next to carry. Gelderbloom. Now they shift it. Houston. Bouncing ball well taken by Brown. Cal Davis sticks him on his back. Oh, massive shot coming in from Cecil on Leishman. The skipper did well to spin away. Keen. Bit of space now, more passive defending from Watsonians in that phase. Yeah, yeah, you're okay, thanks, Cal. Smart call, Cal, thanks. And it's working very hard to retain possession as Henry comes fizzing off his wing. Dynamic specimen is Henry. Wilson just couldn't release those outside him. And he's released his grip on the ball. And Watsonians could make hay on the counter as Berg powers away. Jack Mann makes the tackle. Watsonians wanted a penalty for a high shot, not given. Main, off turnover ball. What can Watsonians do? Guthrie, happy to go to ground and recycle. Bag it now in the pocket. It's a slicey one. It's a very slicey one. Jack Mann can't take it. Spilled forwards by Lewis Berg. So a freebie for Heriots. Houston for himself to chase. It's not an easy one for Baggett to deal with. And Houston will settle for a Watsonians line out inside the away 22. Yeah, it's, it's all getting a little bit loose. It is, yes. That wasn't the best kick by Jason Baggett, but I tell you what, that was some outstanding defence by Watsonians before that. They're, they're getting two men into the tackle no, just about every time, which, way, of course, so you've got four legs up against two, and they're driving Harriet's back and just giving them nothing to work with at all. And... We've just seen the, the kick here, the ball was, was turned over. It was Guthrie coming off his off his wing Thank looking for support. And uh, then back it came to Baggett. And he tried to send that one long downfield. It just came off the, the side of the boot. And came back on the Herriot's side there. But yes, come back to that Watsonian's defence. They actually look more stretched when Herriot's can get out into the wide channels. But uh, we seem to be back to the action. Yeah, Ian Moody, front of your shot, really struggling. So Watsonian's down to 14 at the moment. That is a good clearance from Rory Brands. 
I'd be surprised if Ian Moody is allowed to continue much earlier. We don't know if he's still feeling the effects of that fairly bruising early collision, that bang to the head, but he is now bleeding from the face as well. And I think with the duty of care and the need to protect the brains of players as much as anything else, perhaps it's best for Ian Moody to sit the rest of this one out. That seems to be the decision that Watsonians are, are taking right now. 30 minutes. Time for a cup of tea. As we pause for <laughs> a cup of tea, says Ian Kenny. We'll just take a minute to draw breath, but Watsonians are going to make that change. Ian Moody coming off. And it looks like Neil Irvin Hess get a bit of pace in it, not will come on. Injury, like be a pretty light for light replacement at number eight. But Any problems in your own? it is good to see Ian Moody being protected by those in charge of looking after him because clearly he's he's not been right no i i mean go, goes back to the the head knock which i, I don't think was anything other than a, a bang on the head you can see the see the blood so i, I think they were you know well the, the, the medical staff are out there but I, I don't think there's any suggestion that that wasn't the right decision to let him stay out there at the time but he's, he's had another two knocks since then you can see him just in your screen there with the, with the blood on the forehead and uh, right. sorry looking figure and they, they will be disappointed to lose him but as you say Neil Irvin Hess a, a very capable replacement fairly like for like perhaps a little bit quicker than Moody another good line out for but Ian Moody's his experience and, and his, his, his defensive work his breakdown work a, a lot of unseen work that, uh, that he's already done on the on the pitch but uh, yes Neil, Neil Irvin Hess will be looking forward to getting himself out there Fenton's throw, on, and it slips through the fingertips of haste of uh, Leishman, I beg your pardon. And Louis McPherson fires away for Watsonians. It's Confirmation of that change of an Hess on for Moody. Here come the visitors, Harry Patterson smashed by Henry. That is a fabulous tackle. The young Edinburgh fullback cleaved in yeah, two by the Scotland Knock Sevens flyer. Touch. Knock on into touch, guys. Option. That is an outstanding tackle. I think Scrum we'll get another line. look at it here. The camera comes across. Scrum. Okay. Dumped in the now. air. Ball lost in contact. Fantastic hit. Henry Patterson seems okay, though. His pride perhaps bruised a little bit after that one. Big loss for both sides. We mentioned Ian Moody going off earlier. Sam Picure for Heritage Her Rugby. He's been the probably the pick of their, their players over the, the opening games he had uh, the two tries down at, at Millbrae and then I thought was excellent last week at, at Bridgehawk so Herit, Herit will be disappointed to have lost him yeah, they've lost Bacure but they do have courtesy of Henry's tackle another enticing bit of real estate I think you I think I think we just need to take a small step closer because you're getting overextended and you're coming together early that's what I have okay so I'll ask you guys to do that please let's fucking go once again, apologies if you're picking up any industrial language over Ian Kenny's referee's mic. Players do have a, a habit of uh, cheering themselves up for scrummages. This is not Ian, it's not Ian Kenny, we should add. <laughs> yes, it's not. Crouch! <laughs> Bind! Chris Keener will be bratting. They're having a right ding dong battle on this side of the scrum. Again, there's very little to choose between those packs at scrum time. Here's Gelderbloom, Houston, Kyle Brown, King, little dab through, looking for Jones, well recovered by Harry Patterson, he rather makes amends for losing the ball in that mighty tackle, the Watsonians will try and tackle, guys. muscle their way forward through Van Yekirk. in the pocket is Miller, and again, Watsonians having to defend, but they are absorbing I'm just talking there. Oh, no, 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 no. the attacking phases that Heriots are producing. Yeah, I wouldn't say Watsonians are one of these sides who prefer not to have the ball because there are, are sides that would rather just defend. They, they want the ball in hand, but they look very, very comfortable in defence. Heriots lying much flatter in attack there uh, and, and putting boot to ball. That was great defensive work by Harry Patterson because it looked dangerous for a moment. Well taken by Wilson. Gilder Bloom very flat for Jack Mann, who slalom past one tackle. Takes three in the end to stop the colossal number eight. Gelderbloom. Houston again, the grubber kick is used. 
And again, the space is found. Can King control it and score? Oh, yes, he can. Superb carry from Mann. Wonderful vision from Houston. The pace, the handling and the finish from the teenage fullback. Harriet strike back. Great take off the top of the line out. And then look at that pass from Gelder Bloom out into the midfield. And Jack Mann just arcing out to his right. Found a bit of space and got his side on the front foot. And the Watsonians' defence, because they're on the back pedal, now scrambling. They look well set, though. They come up and just the vision of Bruce Houston to see where the space was in behind. And what a pick up at pace there by King. Herriot strike back. It's excellent from Houston and from Mann, but the, the pick up at full tilt with the pressure on from King is a very difficult skill to execute in those circumstances. Incredibly hard to, to do that as well, and you're you're probably, well, I would be, not panicking, but you're looking around, going, you know, is there somebody about to, to hit me? Do I have to offload this? And he just maintained his focus. He had one job to do: get his hands in the ball at pace and dot it down. I don't think I'd have even reached the ball personally. Well, there's that as well. Yes. <laughs> Here is Houston then from wide on the right to bring Harriet back within a point. Oh, he struck the right uprights. A rare miss from Bruce Houston, who was five from five yeah, against five. the Wolves. And it's five points to eight five in Watsonian's favour yeah. as we approach the final five minutes of this first half. Very closely fought, as we expected. That's such a rarity seeing Bruce Houston miss a, a kick. Difficult position out there, but you almost just expect him to, to get them. But uh, they'll be much feeling much, much happier about themselves now, Harriet. Yeah, it was a ruthless back, strike, that, from Herriot's rugby. And you feel they needed that as well because they have had so much of the ball and so little to show for it on the scoreboard. This is Patterson jinking and darting through. Cal Davis, the hooker. Baggett, plenty runners. Baggett opted to keep the ball and then he's lost it. Kyle Brown stripped in the tackle. And it could shift this. They do have numbers on the left. Instead, Dan Gamble is asked to truck it straight Don't down the middle Gilda Bloom Houston again testing the Watsonians back three Guthrie ransacked by the chasers Brand for Cecil Brand asking for protection and in the pocket is Baggett to blast Watsonians out of trouble but it's impressive the way that Bruce Houston is is orchestrating this Heriot's attack. He's, he's putting in a, yes, a range of chips and grubbers and dinks that are turning the Watsonians' defence and, and maybe keeping them honest, whereas before they were able to come up and, and stop the attacks at source. That, that's exactly right, yes. The, he, he keeps them guessing. He's a great distributor, but he'll quite happily just chip the ball over the top or he'll send a, a kick long into the 22 and look for that 50-22. So he's, he's very difficult to, to play against. There's a chance a couple of minutes ago for Watsonians in the centre of the field. They're, they're getting themselves set very quickly and, and uh, the Heriot's defence were, were all at sea. I think it was Carl Davis pulled the ball out the back door to Jason Baggett and he, you mentioned in commentary he went himself and he had two or three players outside him. And I think I'm right in saying there's only one Heriot's defender left and uh, it was a, a real opportunity. They were on their own side of halfway but uh, that's a, a real missed opportunity for Watsonians. Here's a question, Bruce. Bruce Houston is 23 years old. He's Northern Irish, but he is Scottish qualified. If you were one of the, the pro coaches, given Time the on, depth guys. that is required at, at standoff, would you be looking pretty closely at him based on his, his performances, his pedigree in the pro game? I think I would, yes. As you say, he's, he had one game, uh, one cap for, for Ulster previously before he came over here, but he, he is such a consistent performer. That, that's the thing for me. He, he never has a bad game. I'll let you get back to commentary just now, but I think he's worth talking about Bruce Houston in a bit. And it's Houston's skill that has put Heriot's rugby in this position. Michael Linus is on it. Hooker for Cami Fenton. He has possession. Now releases Gelder Bloom. Jake Henry off his wing. He'll take some stopping. Again, making good inroads. Houston steps inside, but Louis Ball lined him up. Gelder Bloom. Sedak. Polish international running Sedak. 
as is his brother. Well, perhaps an opportunity for Heriots. Brown was lurking. Pass didn't go. Gelderbloom. Off he goes. Hot stepping through the middle. In goes Wilson at scrum half. Linus. King. Baggett trying to hold them up and create them all. Gelderbloom again. Moving it from right to left. Heriots probing for weaknesses. Trying to find their second try. Two minutes of the first half remaining. Sonians were crying for the penalty for holding on. Ian Kenny unmoved. Linus makes another carry. Gilda Bloom. Hasty. Two man tackle on the skipper. And he is thwarted. Seb Cecil is such a nuisance. Such a good player. And it's going backwards right now. Kyle Brown trying to reverse that trend. Houston again. What's he got in his locker this time? It's a dusty ball. And it forces Godsmart to go back. And he lost it. Fraser Jones actually does very, very well to buy himself some time. And then it's lost forwards. Jones had to throw it away or he was going to go into touch. But Chris Keane, the loose head prop, was not expecting to have a ball rocketed somewhere near his Achilles at we such short notice. To problem, yeah. And but typically after we talked up Bruce Houston, sorry, he... <laughs> He misplaces a pass. Just what I was going to say there, right? and again, I think it was just a, a bit of miscommunication. The, the players outside, not sure who was going to, to take that one. But once again, superb defence by Watsonians. There were a few phases in there where you could see that Heretz were trying to up the pace and, and, and uh, you know, get the ball away from the, the breakdown faster. And that was challenging. That was testing the Watsonians' defence. But when, you, when you're playing more slowly and you allow that, uh, that defensive line to get set, there, there just seemed to be no spaces and again they're going for the, the, the two-man tackle see Seb Cecil on this side of the Watsonian scrum the blind side with the white tape around his head getting himself involved as that kind of outside tackler jamming in so often here come Watsonians then and on goes Lewis Berg the try scorer a brilliant work over ball Jack Mann over it so too was Sadak. Heriots have the penalty, and they will have the final opportunity of this first half to launch an attack. A rare opportunity at the breakdown there for Heriots. We said earlier how accurate Watsonians were at the breakdown. We'll be disappointed with that. Just left half a gap. Yes, go. So final throws of this first 40 minutes. Three points in it. He's he's on ball. He stayed on ball. I've blown my whistle. He's still on ball. One last visit to the Watsonians 22. What can they do with it? What can they make of it? Can they snatch a lead to take into the sheds? Lost three day at Golden Acre, but Linus hits Govanlock, and this is where Harriet's can cause problems. It's driving more that has borne fruit in the opening couple of rounds and it is making good headway once more. Gelda Bloom Blakes breaks away. Fraser Jones cut down. The clock is red. The next time the ball is lost. The half time whistle will sound. Gelda Bloom. Dan Gamble pumping his mighty legs. Gilda Bloom again, misses Linus to God's mark. That was clever. Quick ball for Heriots. Gilda Bloom, Houston, Brown cutting back against the grain. Cal Davis waiting. Leishman is next to try his hand. Gilda Bloom, referee in the way in the 910 channel. Houston, what's he got up his sleeve this time? Heriots have it still through man. But there was a little. Handling error, and that will be that for this engrossing and very closely fought first half. Not a lot in it at all, as we expected in the opening 40 minutes. A try apiece for Berg and for King. Lee Miller's penalty the difference at the interval. It's Heriot's Rugby 5, Watsonian's Rugby 8. Devices. Well, it's time now for our weekly half-time feature. And of course we are building up once more to the Women's World Cup later this year. Scotland women are in action against the USA on the 27th of August before hosting Spain 
on Sunday the 11th of September. Both of those games will be played at Edinburgh's Dam Health Stadium and of course helping the squad prepare for that massive trip to New Zealand later in the year. Ahead of those matches, we've been speaking to a host of Scotland players. This week, it's the return of New Zealand-born hooker Molly Wright, who tells us all about the moments that made her. Hi, my name's Molly Wright, and these are the moments that made me. Uh, so this first photo uh, is of me my first ever rugby club, which is uh, in Reefton, which is where I grew up, and the lovely green and whites. It, it's where I decided, well, I didn't, I didn't decide. It's where I found out my love for the game. And it's pretty much, you know, my first rugby memory, playing for this team and, and being involved in a rugby club and all that comes with being involved in a rugby club. So my dad was a big part of the club at the time and got me involved early. Uh, so this next photo is of my first uh, senior women's team that I played for, which is the Otago University women's team. Uh, it was the first time I was exposed to women's rugby. I'd previously only played mixed rugby or schoolgirls rugby. So it was a, a bit of a step up in terms of expectation. It's also the first team that uh, transitioned me into the front row. So I probably got a lot to thank them for um, in that way. And I, th there were lots of very, very successful players involved at that club and we had some really good coaching. Uh, Helen Littleworth, she was one of the uh, coaches there at the time who was an ex-Black Fern. And having those people and having those role models to help develop your game really, really helped me progress as a rugby player. Uh, so the next photo is one of the provincial teams I played for in New Zealand. Again, I was really, really lucky to be surrounded by some very talented players and coaching staff. And this was definitely my first experience of being in and around an environment, like a performance environment, uh, that really pushed you to be the best that you could be. You had to work hard to get your position. It was also a time where I'd just started my first job and I was starting to be introduced to the balancing act of, of women's rugby and that I was trying to juggle uh, a new job and playing rugby. So it was a, a huge commitment at the time. Um, and I, I really enjoyed playing the rugby, but equally I did struggle with that balance at that point. Next photo is a group of us um, from the Scottish team that I play for, uh, Watsonians. Uh, this photo is from uh, Sevens tournament actually in, in Mull that we, we managed to win. Uh, but Watsonians means a huge amount to me because they are the team that got me back into rugby. So when I first moved to Edinburgh, they uh, were the first group of friends that I really made for myself and, and created this supportive environment for me. It was very much a, a family for me in Edinburgh. So the last photo I have got is from our um, tournament in Italy, the qualification tournament in Italy last year. It's the game where we beat Ireland which was our last ditch effort to make it to the last qualification round. Um, so this game and this photo means so much to me. It was that last bit of hope that this whole journey for me could come full circle, uh, that we'd be able to go to Dubai and book ourselves a, a trip to New Zealand. It was a, that was the make or break game. Yes, we still had a tournament to play in Dubai, but if we hadn't been successful there, those, that opportunity was gone for us. Yeah, such a huge year for women's rugby in Scotland and after some very encouraging performances in the Six Nations, Brian Easton's team heading to New Zealand in the autumn to take part in that historic World Cup. And do get along to support the girls if you can later this month and uh, next month against the USA and Spain. We're back here in the Edinburgh sunshine. It is Watsonians who have that slender 8-5 leads at Golden Acre against Heriot's Rugby. Two formidable Edinburgh rivals going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Bruce Miller. And there is so little to choose between them as we wait for the second half to, to kick off. Yes, the, the, the previous two games this weekend have been decided by bigger margins than, than we might have expected, whereas uh, this one, it, it's just got, you know, 
it's going to go down to the wire. You can you can see Herrick's probably had the better of that first half. Um, I think I say every week it'll be interesting to see the possession and the territory stats, but I think it goes without saying that Herriot's had, had more ball, more more territory, but unable to make anything of it. Uh, and again, well, what Sony is always make this make us commentators sound good. We said they would be clinical, and they were. They got one real opportunity. They went through lots of phases and uh, and got their score. So very evenly balanced at half time. Well, we can take a look at some of the pick of the action from that opening 40 minutes. This was the penalty that opened the scoring with just four on the clock. An early infringement by Harriet Rugby and Lee Miller stepping up and doing what Lee Miller often does, splitting the kindling and giving Watsonians the slender lead. This, Bruce, was a, a very well-worked score for Lewisberg. Yes, we're, we're not seeing all the, the phases before it. If we rewind what seemed like about two minutes, it was initiated around about halfway, uh, and there's some lovely, lovely little passes between the forwards and back. See Lewis Berg going over in the corner there, but there were lots of passes between the between the forwards and backs. They made their way upfield, really accurate at the breakdown, uh, and Rory Brand just picked his moment to give the ball out to the wing to Lewis Berg. And this again, a, a top-class try from Herrets. They've been banging at the door all half, and finally they managed to to blow it off its hinges. Clever from Bruce Houston. It really was, but started from the line out, the ball off the top, and uh, as we said at the time, out to, to Jack Mann. We've not seen so much of him this week, but when he gets into space there, gets his team on the front foot, defence back pedalling a little bit, and they rushed up and there was nobody in behind, and Bruce Houston saw it. And as we said at the time, that's still a difficult one to finish. Picked up at pace by Dan King. Yeah, Houston very unlucky with this conversion, just clipping the post as it veered in towards the uprights so eight points to five Watsonians lead at the interval a very very slender margin between the teams let's talk a little bit about Jack Manbruce we discussed him at length when we were at Stirling last weekend and, and you awarded him the, the player of the match award that sort of carry backing up what he did last weekend getting his team on the front foot against one of the biggest and most physical teams in the Super Six. That, that's the kind of thing that he needs to do regularly to compel those dishing out contracts that, that he's worthy of one. Yeah, you have to produce performances week in, week out. Any of these players can can look great on a one-off basis, but you've got to do it every single week. And I, I think Jack Mann is at his best when they get him out into the, the wide channels or out into the mid midfield there where he's got a bit more space. He's running at, at, at gaps and he's very difficult to stop. If, if, if you're playing in tight, it doesn't really matter how strong a runner you are, you're going to get met with some force by the, the defence where it's a bit tighter. We've already spoken about what Sonian's ability to get two men in on the tackle. So he's probably not going to stand out in, in those areas of the pitch. So I think Herrits will look to get him out into, say, that midfield, out, out on an edge. Uh, and, and we'll maybe see more of him in this second half because uh, he's not done anything wrong, but he's certainly not been as prominent. He were getting the, the build-up to that, that first try and um, good work at the at the breakdown, say the accuracy, just the carrying through the forwards. And if you, you look at the, the effect it has on that, uh, that Herriot's defence as they try and reorganise themselves, and most teams will, will do this, as we've said in, in previous weeks, they'll just keep it tight, try and suck in that defence, Lewis Baird coming a go there, and it's interesting, you have to watch him getting up from the, the ground here, because it was, he was the, the try scorer, they went very, very close through the, the forwards, you see Lewis Berg now, and that's good vision by the 13, because he, he realised that Herriot's defence were, were honeypotting, if you, if you like there, and he just got himself out wide, and you can see Harry Patterson asking for the, for the ball there, so he was aware of an opportunity, out on that touch line, and this was slow here, Harry Patterson just running the short line, and that just sucked in the, the defence again, and Lewis Berg, great play, but see, that goes back two or three phases when he saw there was the potential for, for that, and he just took his, his place out in the wing. Edinburgh Castle standing watch over the city, and there are fewer more beautiful sights than that on a, a glorious day in Scotland's capital. And here come Watsonians, eager to preserve their winning record. Remember, 12 in a row in all competitions. Last tasted defeat back in October last year in the, the regular season championship. They won the sprint series, 7 from 7, 2 from 2 so far in the Fosrock Super 6 proper. And they have a three-point lead to protect and build on in this second 40. Stuart Edwards and Finn Gillis still imparting 
Some nuggets of wisdom to Heriot's in the changing rooms. For the home side too, ready to take the field for this decisive half of rugby. It's been a proper, proper scrap this so far. We're just waiting for it to explode into life in terms of the attacking rugby on show. Two well taken tries. Just wait for the whistle, please. And we're almost ready to go. Bob. Hold, 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 hold. Good to go. Ready, go. So Watsonians and Jason Baggett will get this match deciding half of rugby underway to conclude round three in the Foss Rock Super Six Championship. And what a round it has been. What a carry that is from Jack Mann, who we spoke about at half time. Such a dynamic presence at number eight. He missed a lot of the sprint series in last season through injury. 22 years old, still. Big chance for him to make it in the pro ranks. Gail Doom steers, creates away. Patterson comes forward, doesn't take it. Jake Henry tries to play football, but Brand smuggles the loose ball. And Davis. Spent a year in New Zealand as a young Davis actually worked on the, the Barrett's family farm. Both in Jordy Scott and Co. Baggett sends it high. As the sun begins to fall, it makes it much harder to catch those ones. Louis Ball pounces on the, the confusion in Herrett's ranks, and Brand again chasing the home side back. King. Don't, don't advance for. Hoofs it away. Hey, sir. Good kick this from Dan King. And he goes Baggett. South African ball and fly half. Stay, lad, stay. Unflustered, unhurried. Oh, that is awkward. Backwards, backwards. Did go backwards through the hands of King. 50, Houston. Searching for that 50 22 again. Won't quite find it. Guthrie covering. Stay seven. Well, this could be interesting. It's an awkward kick from Guthrie. It's allowed Gelderbloom to Let him start go some nine. broken field gaps. Wilson at scrum half. Godsmark. Jack Mann slips two tackles. Jack Mann careering away. Jack Mann steaming for the line and scoring. That is a colossal solo score. Jack Mann goes from strength to strength in the Super 6. And Heriot's lead for the first time. Well, it's exactly what we said at halftime. That's where they need to get Jack Mann popping up, is out in those channels. Again, great feet, just steps off his left foot round Cal Davis. And look at the pace. He's round the winger, and no chance for the fullback Harry Patterson there. Wonderful run by the big Heriot's number eight. But that came from a kicking duel, which Watsonians lost. And the, the one team that I wouldn't take on in a kicking battle is, is Heriot's. They came out very much on top of that, and that's what got them the uh, the position. And resulted in a try which takes Heriot's into the lead. Three tries in two games for Jack Mann after his double at Bridgehaw. And that one was a corker. I think going back to the kick, and Watsonians were in possession on the Heriot side of halfway, and Rory Brand put a little kick over the top. I could see what he was trying to do, but it was from that when I think they, they should have kept the ball in hand that they started being forced back by the, the Heriot's kickers. This man, Bruce Houston, with a couple of nice kicks in there. And it resulted in that Jack Mann try. Houston then to nudge Heriot's onto a dozen points. Zero from one so far today. That one just holding up in the wind. Does it come round enough? Oh, it does. It has the legs by a matter of inches. 12 yeah, points to eight. Heriot strike first after the break. And that could be the try that this game needs to, to really come alive in an attacking sense. Yes, that will give Heriot a lot of confidence and... Perhaps gives them the blueprint how to, to approach this second half and look to just not make any mistakes here, and that's not great, but they are going to come up with the ball. 
I'm going to go knock on. For me, the time it was okay. We saw Watsonians in the first half from their try made a bit of a hash of the, the restart, didn't deal well with it. And I was just about to say, Herricks just need to, to get a hold of this and get the ball back up the other end, not put themselves under any pressure. Didn't take it cleanly, fortunately for the home side. Ball knocked on by Watsonians, so Herricks will have a put into the scrum. An injury here to Lewis Govanlock, though, at the blind side. Happy you're going in for the clean out, but there's one up there where you've got giant man's lying on the ground. You've cleaned him out and then you've gone in for a second. Just, you know, just, okay. yeah, I get that, it was just nothing, nothing cheap and silly, right? Yeah. It's always interesting to have a listen in to what the referees are saying during these breaks in play. It's uh, Louis Ball and Seb Sessler the five, and talking to, just pushing their luck a little bit with some of the clear outs in that ensuing set of phases. And Kenny just warning them that. You're right, number six. Six, you okay? Egregious flying shots will not go on. Yeah, guys, turn back on. Big pressure, no easy out. Herit, no on. easy out. Hey, no, hey, no, come on, Turkey, boy. No easy out. A couple of times, Herit's have looked less than assured under Watsonian's restarts and high balls. Let's go, boys. We do have the scrum put in this time. Let's keep our space on this side now, guys, okay? And Watsonians are making a little change to their back line. Jason Baggett off. Joe Reynolds, another very, very shrewd playmaking option is coming on. Chris. Veteran New Zealander, 32 years old. Point. And he will slot Six. in there. Might see the Miller moving ah, into 10. No. Ah, no. Stay on 9, 9. Jack Mann asked to drive his team out of a tight number corner. The number and nine. There's a high and shot on man. Woody Brand. And number 9. And you're also to a headlock okay? to bring man down. And man is down. Okay. Ronnie, have a. You have a penalty here for the high tackle, you have one over there for the offside. Oh, guys. Just this one here, okay? High tackle, guys, and number nine, you were also offside. What's when he's just struggling to get a foothold in this second half? Seven. Which is the first half was, it's been mostly Harriet's. One and three, Harriet. One and three, so one and three. Yeah, you just you can't get in that channel between the eight and the flanker, right? Yeah, it's the left arm of Brand, isn't it? Around the neck of Mann. Yeah, even beyond your. Yeah. And he was offside in front of the, the ball at scrum time as well, so pick your infringement. Harriet's have brought on Josh Scott in place of Chris Keane in the front row. His head prop. And you can see who lifts his captain high above his head. Gelder Bloom. Houston. What's Mark? Oh, nearly an interception. Miller was buzzing around. A scrum advantage for a knock-on. Oh, spill through the hands of Lee Miller. Herriot's escape. It was all rather dicey. Big shot from Davis, but Wilson spins out of it. Ian McClanahan also won a tight head for Dan Gamble. Houston lost by Josh Scott. The advantage was over, so Watsonians have possession. Van Yekirk swatting aside Houston. Wilson lines up. Louis Ball, we saw that coming from a mile off. Penalty advantage, wide seven. Penalty advantage. And Spotsonians now who have the penalty up their sleeve. Reynolds, that looks rather forwards, and it is. Guys, that, that's forward. No, scrum advantage was over. Offside. Some colossal it? defence from both sides. There was a hit came in there from Carl Davis, the Watsonians hooker, Offside, vice captain. And then. Ian Wilson made one from yeah, the other side. You yeah. see the ball coming fast, out. The ball. Well, it was fairly yeah, flat. Lee Miller will argue that, uh, that he was travelling forward, so the ball was, of course, travelling forward, but he's left outside. his hands going backwards. But I think um, I think the referee was probably right on that occasion. Jack Mann struggling again, but you can see, you can see the intensity. That just that when these two old rivals come together, it just seems to come up a notch. They really do outside, enjoy right? knocking lumps really out of each other. It looks sadly like we've seen the, yeah, right, uh, the yeah. last of Jack Mann in this game because he's really come into it in the, the five or ten minutes right, before half time the, and no, then the start of the second half. Right. He was quiet in the first half hour, but uh, he was really lighting the game up and it's sad to see him go. Yeah, it's a real shame Jack Mann forced off. He took a blow to, to the midriff, it seemed, in that previous right, set of phases. Should be nursing that sort of left pelvic kidney area. And he is off. I imagine Joe Don't Britton would be the man to come on come and find out who's Joe Edwards and who he has gone for in just a moment. Let's use. It is Watsonians though with the pressure on. 
Miller, lovely inside ball. That's a scything run from McPherson. Battering through all the way to the line. It doesn't get any better than that. Loman McPherson. A steak knife through the softest Terriot's butter. That's the way to strike back. That is a no, wonderful no. score there from Loman McPherson. Using his footwork there, bouncing off tacklers. He still had a huge amount to do to get across the line. Initially came from the line out drive by Watsonians. It's pushing Heriot's defence back and out it came to, is it Lee Miller I think standing at, uh, at first receiver and he just angled out the way so he knew exactly what was happening. Loman McPherson coming from behind the, the ruck so he's essentially hidden to the Heriot's defence and I say if Lee Miller had to just move out the way, just create a little bit of space inside him for McPherson to run into it. So he did his job but McPherson still had so much to do, there were four or five Heriot's defenders to beat that somehow he got himself over the line and gets his side's nose back in front. This is, well I think the late great Bill McLaren would describe that as a pound of haggis-like conversion from Lee Miller. A rare mistake off the tee from the Watsonians captain, but it is the visitors who have snatched back the lead. Just seven minutes after relinquishing it, what a start to the second half we've had. Yeah, yeah, Two superb absolutely. individual scores. And Heriot's trail once more. The first half there was there was plenty of action, but uh, maybe not the amount of scoring that we we would have expected. The second half has already come up a notch. And with half an hour left, still anybody's game. I wouldn't like to put my money on either side here. It is Joey Britton, by the way, who's come on for Jack Mann at number eight for Heriots. From the Nottingham Trent University back Inside row. Cal, the 15, thanks. Just moved up to Heriots this year from down south. And he's wearing 20 at the back of the line out. So Linus is throwing to Govanlock. Stop, stay. The Heriots okay, have now. by way of response. Phonetic uh, opening 10 minutes of the second half. And again, the Heriots same ball, same ball. decimating Watsonians. This is a thunderous no, drive no, 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 from the home team. Ian Wilson goes in to protect. Yeah, yeah. Heriot's still keep it in, no, no, no. still it's going forwards, Gilderbloom demands it now, and out it comes to Jacob Henry, trying to get on the outside of Berg, but Lewis Berg has Henry's number, no. Gilderbloom, slow ball this time, and McLaren is in there, out for out your tackler, Gilderbloom, Houston working the blind side through Kyle Brown. Knock on advantage. And he's lost it though. And another solid piece of defensive work from Watsonians. The defence really is so strong. The Heriots have, have got to produce almost miracles to, to get through it. And they're having a, they're having a, a very good go at it. Well, Two tries, so they've shown that they can breach it, but they're certainly not Sorry, finding it easy going. Some enormous hits right? coming in, and, and some of the Watsonians well, forwards the tackle, just stood up. are so just fighting ball, for everything at the breakdown. We said how accurate they are at their own bro breakdown. Louis Ball and Seb Cecil, for me, when they're in, in defence, make an absolute nuisance of themselves at the breakdown. Cecil and me are two of the the best flankers no, no, in this competition, no doubt, and together, why, like the Devils henchmen, they're, they're just, hideously hard to, to shift over ball, well then, they're relentless, well they're just a really complete don't have to pain in the neck yeah, to play against. I think that summarises <laughs> the pair of them perfectly, and as I say, the, the two second rows as well, line, forming a great partnership. Louis Ball, I, of the two, I think, standing out for me today, doing the same right. sort of job as Cecil hey, guys, and Main. It's a lot of that unseen work that happens at a breakdown making tackles in and around the, the fringes and getting back up and making another one. It's not easy to do, but they are just relentless. Yeah, so much to like about both teams. But Sony is number unbeaten in the first two rounds. Not only unbeaten, but earning bonus point victories. Ten points they are up there with their Shabools who 
back to winning ways earlier today with a 49-7 triumph over previously unbeaten Barabir Bears. Watsonians second level on points with the duels and would retake top spot with any sort of points here. And for Hayes could send them as high as third. Crouch! Mind! Set! In nine, in, come on! Big shove coming on from the home pack, but it's there for Brand. It's taken back. And Reynolds using that left peg. And that is a well worked exit from Watsonians. Joe Reynolds using all his experience to find some space in the backfield. Have the line, guys. New front row on for Heriots, and they've, they've brought a bit of energy there. You could see they were desperate to have a go at that. What's only in scrum? Yeah, I'll, keep, I'll keep an eye on it, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, a hint of a drive on, but what's only in were, were up to the task there. Good ball, and then a great kick by Joe Reynolds off the left boot. Cross field. Thanks, guys. Sun searing into the eyes of Michael Ennis on the near side as you look at it. No, foot was down, it's all good. Rudy Leishman, the captain. Same ball, same ball. Yeah, this ball has become a real weapon for the under Edwards and Gillis. Penalty advantage, penalty advantage. They milked the penalty, that's what they were looking for. So a free shot. Houston just dabs it over the top. Kyle Brown gets after it. Gone forward from Harriet's come back. But he could Number get four pause cleanly to it. And they'll settle for the penalty yeah, infringements. Well. You're right, you right, mentioned the Harriet's line out mall there. They scored a try from it last week. Uh, made a mess of another one, but they're, they, they didn't get themselves set particularly well in the first two attempts are, today, but their last two or three have been much, much better. Uh, and, and likewise, Watsonians, to be fair, their first one wasn't wasn't perfect, but uh, both both sides is a weapon when they can get themselves uh, set up properly. And it's got themselves over the line with a, a driving line Number out five, who, in the first who? half, just couldn't quite get the ball down. And, well done, guys. and again, the, the very expansive, exciting team to watch. But if they're going to compete with hold. the top sides, and, and they're hold. showing today that they can compete with the very okay. top side, hold, hold them, please, they, hold have them. To, they have to be more complete, hold, and guys. they have to have a pack that can take on the best. And it appears that they are building one. All right, let's go. What's the time there, Graham? It's another lineup that works well. Backwards to the mark. And time Fergus Pringle please, rings the changes again. Beresford on for Van Nieker in the lock. Linus, Gelderbrim on the loop. That's right. Henry off his wing. Trying to work an overlap, but Houston sees his passing options cut off. You're fine there, Lee. Gelderbrim, a veteran Wilson, shoveled on to Joey Britton. A distinctive rat tail trailing behind him. Govan Locke, he has got very good footwork, the flanker, a nimble customer. McLaren, a show and a thump. Gelderbloom rounds Cal Davis. Harrison Courtney with the tackle. Rifting with the shoulder line. And he's stripped the ball back, and Harry Patterson can smash it clear. Always inside, always inside. He was always inside his 22. So that will go down as a, a very, very inside. good kick from Patterson. I've got a good view, Ross, don't worry. And again, Harry, it's just not quite <laughs> executing in their attack. No, for the second time in the game, there was a, a hint of a gap around the, the edge of the ruck the for Heriot. And they, they tried to go through, but uh, as you say, just not quite executing. And in the launch, yeah, he was in the 22, they lost an awful lot of ground just with the, the speed that that Watsonian's defence comes up at. I mean, to be fair, they would be they'd be happy, perhaps, to, to lose a metre or two because it gives them that uh, centre field option that they can play from, and it just allows them to get into their shape. So if, if you go through two or three passes, you may well lose ground off that of that first phase, but they just seem to lose an awful lot, and they've, they've not quite got the flow to their attack that they did in the first half. There were two very clear lines of attack from Heriot's early on, and they were using that to go wide, and haven't quite got the, the shape that they did, whether it's the, the changes, but uh, either way, they've lost that ball again when they were getting themselves into a promising position. Great kick by Harry Patterson, and Heriot's find themselves down in their own half once again. Heriot's did beat Watsonians twice in last year's championship. Narrow 21-20 victory, and then a, a more comprehensive 26-8 triumph. They were well beaten in the sprint series this year, 34 points to five. Watsonians gave them a bit of a cuffing. As we see more changes back up front nine, for nine, Fergus Pringle. Cole Lamerton coming on, leading no. 17. Okay, now. Drive now. 
Alison Courtney withdrawn. Yeah, just don't change, Cal. Kings coming up as well, forced off with a, okay, let's go, a bit of a blow. So Fraser Hasty is on. Rudy Leishman will shift from eight to six, you imagine. And here's a good counter attacking chance for Patterson. Now Guthrie cuts inside Henry, takes out a couple of players with that step. Godsmark ripped it just before the knee hit the ground, so it's legal. It's play on, it's counter attacking ball for Heriots. Linus maybe should have passed that. No nine. Houston in the pocket. Here's Reynolds. Towering, steepling up and under. Now taken by Jones, who is then enveloped by Reynolds and by Berg. 23 minutes remaining. One point of difference. For the final quarter. No, 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 still in We have before us. Use nine. Use nine. Another team too keen to mess around in their own half at the moment. No wonder, given the stakes, it's not a great kick from Gelderbloom. Backwards off, Watsons, play. Batted back by Watsonian's hand. So Patterson can try to spark something. No four, you're not first man. Scrappy minute or so at Golden Acre. That's loose from Lamerton. Miller picks Ta it knock up. Knock on 17. Burrows forwards. They come off a Heriot's hand in the tackle, so scrum advantage, and that scrum First will now be guys. required. Get here. Number seven. Apologies knock for any <laughs> industrial language you yeah. may have picked up over the referee's mic. I think it's safe to assume Michael Linus was not too happy with uh, whoever left him on the deck there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, by Lewis Berg, a very rare mistake by the outside centre. He's Say such an again, assured Bob, player. Very hard running centre. We saw his vision earlier ah, okay. as he Josh, carried the ball in the lead up to his own score. Like 50 -50 yeah, just crept his way out to the right wing and waited for the time to come from Brand to give him the, the scoring pass, but knocks the ball on there. Is that Lee Ball perhaps, right, just with all his hard work, is suffering from a, a bit of cramp, the big Watsonians rugby <laughs> second right row. 20 minutes. <laughs> and the referee Guys, saying he can't believe on. there's 20 Here minutes go, left either, it's, 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 yes, it's warm no out there, yeah, yeah, it'll be hard going for both sides as well as the officials. The I still think there's more excitement to come from this finely poised game. And it's making a change at scrum half. The experienced Murder McCandrew on for Gelderbloom. Jimmy Bessford as well is on for Cockathon Kirk. What's only in second row? Bounds! Gelderbloom has been good again. Murder McCandrew made a difference with the length of his pass when he came on. They scored one from a, a long pass when he cut out about three forwards. Uh, close to the Sterling Wolves line, and he's, he's a very good scrum half. Plays on the edge, I think, Murdoch like Andrews. He's willing to throw those passes, he's willing to back his skills. One set up a try for Heriots, one of which was intercepted for, for Ewan Cunningham to go from 60. Um, but he is such a seasoned player at this level. A very, very clever scrum half in how he orchestrates play. Set! Irvin Hess. Brand. Looking for runners and finding the ever willing Lewis Berg. Brand again. Quick ball for Cecil who blasts Britain aside. Irvin Hess. He's got to try in each of the opening two rounds. Looking for his third and three. Miller now. Shifting it wide. Berg is there again. This is Cole Lamerton, the massive Scotland under 20s prop. Dust kicking up off the turf as he felt. Miller into Louis Ball. Real workhorse today. Brand elbows Linus aside. Miller. Berg trying to go through God's mark. Does go through God's mark. Houston just sticks his head in the spokes. Brand again threatening the fringes. Carl Main bursting through. And Jamie Beresford were galloping untouched. That's the ruthlessness that Watsonians possess. That's the power and the pizzazz of the unbeaten league leaders. And that's the try they needed from Jamie Beresford. That's a lovely try again there. The ball out the back of the two forwards out to Lewis Berg. Right over the top of Niall Godsmark. 
Suddenly the Heritage defensive back pedalling, then Brand saw the space, finds Main, and just drew the last man. Right, it goes there to Jamie Beresford, not long on the pitch, goes over for Watsonia's rugby, but again that came from good play on the other side, on the stand side of the pitch. Just going through the phases, forwards carrying hard, clearing out well, and eventually you, you create opportunities, just dragging that Heritage defence around all over the place and very hard to play against and, and, and again how many times do we say it I think we've said it two or three today already that you you just give what uh, give Watsonians one or two chances in a game they take them both they kill you off and they probably had what a third of possession Lee Miller then to make this a two score game big kick this viciously swerving through over it goes with the wind and it's rugby 12 Watsonians 20 and Heriots now must score twice to turn this game around Jamie Beresford's try the difference so far interesting story by the way Jamie Beresford spent a bit of time in America on a, a rugby scholarship he was an All-American at First Point USA University in Georgia he was dropped from the team last weekend in round two left out and he is back in and proving his worth no, I never touched it. Here it's making their final replacement of the match with Ross Jones on for Kyle Brown in midfield. There's all of their benchmen now with us. He's trapped in there. He no balls in. Use nine. Started the second half so well. Use nine. Led 12 Use minutes nine. ago. Two Watsonians tries have turned the tables. King takes that really well. Full tilt. No, there's nothing in that. Andrew to Houston, Ross Jones to God's mark, a powerful thing going but he is dragged into touch, manhandled by yes. Bergen McPherson, using Hold God's on. mark's momentum against him, what is enemy? excellent defence, Bergen there once again, we've spoken about his hard running, you can see him there, just lining up his man, driving him into touch, working the legs, again, you saw that? Heriot's attack came from a kick and that's perhaps a chance for them because I, I suspect Watsonians now that they have that eight points advantage will look to play rugby down the other end you, you spoke about that more professional approach that, yeah, you're on that your perhaps mark. these two sides in a particular Watsonians take but Heriot's very dangerous when returning the kick so it's perhaps one opportunity for them oh, a throw from Cal Davis to find yeah, Seb Cecil yeah. Heriot suck them all Brand on the short side, the kick is deflected, and the Heriots have it back, a massive clear out coming in, and to Ian Wilson, often plays the full 80 at nearly 34 years old, Wilson will do so again today, Wide right from Ross Jones, God's mark, gaps appearing, God's mark shoveled it back to McAndrew, and then Ross Jones sticks it out on the full, and it is that inaccuracy, that imprecision from Heriots, it is costing them dear in the face of ferocious Watsonians defence. Here we are. Yes, they go through one or two phases, they, look, they, they throw the ball wide, they look dangerous, so they just need to recycle that and, and, and keep playing. But instead, look to, to kick the ball. I think they were just about inside the, the, their half there, perhaps thinking 50-22. The kick lacking accuracy, it just hands possession straight back to Watsonians. Exactly what the Meyer side team want. Once again, a great line out throw from Davis. Cecil takes and his flanker colleague Carl Main is clattering away. And it's loose, but Playing it's not nine, out. And poor yeah, Rory Brand was dynamited off the ball. No, that's the decision, guys. He's been good, Rory Brand, today. His service has been Playing good, but he's nine. also had a, a little snipe on two or three occasions. Notice perhaps a little clip of the heels from Ewan McLaren on number four Louis Ball yeah, in the foreground as he's trying to I'd look for the ball. One from either side. Rory Brand, meanwhile, is um, from a bit of a distance and just going off the feet. The break. Yeah. Exactly taking us over. Maybe just have a word with the lads. Which is okay. Thanks, Kenny is just going to have a message to both captains about these these clear Yeah, time's off. Yeah. Both teams flying in off their feet, and the result is. So what I've seen is Evans come through and he's played the nine. That's where the penalty is, right? Yeah. But 
what I've asked you and what I've just said to Watsons, I think really there's been probably one instance either side where there's guys coming in yeah. maybe from distance and just going off their feet at the breakdown. And we really yeah, can't no, be having that. Yeah, well. yeah, no, no, I'm saying no, they're both sides. Both sides I've, just, yeah, I've yeah. just said exactly the same thing to Cal. I'll just ask you yeah, maybe. Distance, I yeah, just, no, I just be, not, be not from a huge distance, in. but yeah, maybe maybe be a bit yeah, more yeah. sensible. Right? That's 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 it. I think there's been a couple, maybe one on either side, to be honest with you. Yeah, you're grand there. We good? Interesting little chat there. How to make friends and influence people in the style of a rugby captain. I, think, I, mean, I think Michael Linus just chipping away at the in, in the background there. Thinking, well, why should we not be allowed to, to hit them hard? Can I, I think was his words there. Can they not control their their body? Just uh, feeling that you should be allowed to to run in there. And, and, and if it's legal, then you know you, I guess you should be allowed to. But um, that was clearly not legal. Rory Brand, as I say, he's, a, he's had a good game. I think he's only error or, or maybe misjudgment for me was when he, he kicked that ball with, with Watsonians on attack over on the far side and the, the, the stand side of the pitch perhaps should have kept it in hand and Andy Terry it's a, an attacking opportunity but he, he has played well Yeah, Rory Brand's race is run Murray Scott on to replace him at scrum half there he is winning 21 and Watsonians looking to kill this game you feel another try would do just that it would also earn them another try bonus point. Side entry, penalty advantage. And we've got another advantage here. Side entry, number five. Maybe Leishman, the guilty party. Number five, side, side entry. And no surprising, Lee Miller is going straight for the corner. mole has been formed, he's coming from the side, is it? Yeah, yeah. Of course, looking for their fourth try, bonus point try. I'm going, Wadi. Yeah, sitting pretty on three just now. A fourth. Would you imagine kill the contest and secure another bonus point? The line out works. The first part of the job is done. Now the squeeze comes on. The Watsonians' power game is evident. Elliot's standing firm, but Leishman infiltrating illegally. Another Watsonians penalty advantage. Murray Scott gets his first touch. Seb Cecil, standing skipper last week. Good carry from him. Murray Scott again. Miller tried to angle the kick through for Berg, but he knew he had a free shot with the advantage already accruing. I have you swimming in from the side and I also have this gentleman doing it first okay you need better discipline in this area you're swimming in from the, the side, referee side entry at the explaining to to Harriet's coming in at the side I, I think it was this the captain spot, Leishman okay. so then you've then changed your bind find his way through is what I've seen it's the penalty yeah, referee really? explaining that he's changed his bind in order to, to come through so he hasn't really come through the middle he's, he's on the line initially please, for me had done good you work you need better discipline in this area at the line out now okay has, has lost his bind and tried to go go around the side and get to the ball and got to do it all over again the Watsonians will just look to do exactly the same get their their line out drive going well taken by ball here we come once more this big pack of Watsonians juggernauts and squeeze head edge towards the line Scott breaks it away and it's lost forwards Lewis Berg vital bit of head edge defence a try there 12 to play guys listen to the whistle come on the game is done really, isn't it it absolutely is yes one more try and it's gone interesting to see the, the mall set up again there it, it, they don't seem able to keep it straight they're perhaps not getting it quite right at the at the front of that that mall and make another look at it i think if anything fergus pringle might be a little bit disappointed that his side didn't drive over the the line there Let's go, front row. game still in the balance eight points the difference a little over Five. 11 minutes left heriots need to score twice Six to pull it from the fire. Watsonians are on the hunt for a fourth try. Another bonus point win. Scrum crumbles. Referee lets them play. And Ross Jones makes good headway. Houston. A sure presence at 10. No, really no, good no. kick. No, no, it's claiming that Harry Patterson had taken that out, but I think that was a rather optimistic shout. 
Seven and fourteen. So, what's the seven and fourteen? All right. Near side as we look at it. Hey, listen. Murray, 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 Murray. Okay. Murray, come here. Come here. All right. Grabbed it. I'm all well and good. Be chased by Jake Henry because you can see that Harry Patterson was keen to play quickly. Henry's presence was enough to put him off. Can't have it. Okay. I'm all good for a bit of conversation here and there, but not when it's Jake. Sonny and his back three running at them from there. Carl Davis has been excellent again this afternoon. Carl Davis, a, a top professional, a top semi-professional, I beg your pardon. Very, very handy man to have. Here goes Campbell Wilson, who's come on at flanker rather than hooker, wearing 16. Over the top goes the kick. Where's this one landing? Jake Henry, unorthodox, but he gathers it. And Beresford goes in with a tackle. Use it as well as on in the Watsonians back line. A full compliment of Stay up 20. Rock now, no hands, guys. Used now. Rock now, no hands. Rock now, no hands. They're going to have to go from distance, and they're not in a position to try and run it at the moment. Andrew goes high. On to Captain Miller. And off he goes. Goodness me, what a collision, what a hit. From Murdo McAndrew. Scott to Cecil. Well, he's got again, assessing his options. Powerful tackle there from Ian McLaren on Dom Kutzer. Scott once again. Beresford finding a soft shoulder, getting through Linus. Scott. Watsonians eager to kill this game. Reynolds, lovely handling into Cecil. Heading towards the 22 now, Watsonians. Murray Scott spies a gap, caught by his shirt tails, hands it on to Patterson. If Patterson moves it, they're queuing up on the left. He burrows ever closer to the try line. Ball, brilliant leap. Can Beresford get a double? Oh, what a step from the second row. Champagne everywhere at Golden Acre. Bonus point in the bag for Watsonians. And their winning record will extend another week as Beresford grabs a double. Check, and away goes the replacement. Scrum half there, Murray Scott. Initiated the move, spinning out of contact. Harry Patterson, as you said, there they were queuing up on the left. You can see. I think it's Dom Kutzer shouting for it to come out there, but it never got as far as him. The forward said, we're having this one ourselves. Lewis Ball, who's been brilliant this afternoon, getting his hand free and offloading to Jamie Beresford, who can't believe his luck, scoring try number three and four for Watsonians. And I mean, what a second half performance. We, we see, I mean, if, if anything, I suspect Watsonians would love to start better because last week... I think they trailed 13-3 at half-time against the Ayrshire Bulls and then come, come, uh, came back and, and won it. And they often do the last time these two sides met in the sprint series. They gave themselves an awful lot of work to do in the second half. They show that they're capable of, of doing it with some fantastic rugby. And, and I think part of that must also come down to their fitness because they, they look like they could, they could go another 80 minutes here, some of these, some of these players, and some big forwards among them as well that just look like they've got so much running left in them. Harriet's maybe just falling off the pace a little bit now, and, and that is costing them but some fantastic rugby from Watsonians. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant they've worked try this. Murray Scott making the initial pro here, Bruce, and then Harry Patterson sucking in defenders. And whether they moved it or whether they went through the middle as they did, the try could have been sport scored in a number of different ways. Lovely pass this from Ball as well. Yeah, good by the, the big second row. He's done a lot of the, the dirty Yo, work right, this afternoon. Right, but, uh, Time's back himself on. Noticed a little bit more there, out in the open. Just almost jumping through that, that tackle, getting his right hand free and popping it up to, to Beresford on the charge. So Lee Miller then to add the extras and increase Watsonian's points tally by two more 
And he does that in a typically unflustered fashion. 27-12. That's the ball game now with seven and a half to play. And here it's facing a rather mountainous task to take anything from this game. A game they led with 49 minutes played until Wilmer McPherson started a three-try second-half blitz for Watsonians. Scott sends it high for Watsonians. Into it comes Joey Britton. He suddenly found a bit of space. And he too has got a sidestep on him. Oh, super work over the ball from Watsonians. They're beginning to boss the breakdown as well. And it was Campbell Wilson, a 23 year old hooker who is playing in his secondary position as flanker today with the turnover. Herricks will be disappointed how they've just drifted out of this game. Remember, laid 12 points to eight just early in the in the second half. And then unable to add to their tally since then. I wouldn't say allowed Watsonians to come back into it because Watsonians have shown their quality, they've shown that they, I think, have superior fitness. From a Herricks point of view, I think the, the coaches will be just wondering how it's gone quite so badly wrong in the last half hour of this game. A similar story perhaps to the opening round of the season when Herricks led Ayrshire yeah, Bulls narrowly at half time. Maybe just don't quite Time's have the on, game guys. plan, the clinical edge to, to challenge the Bulls and Watsonians quite yet at the top end of the table. I think that's right, we've, we've seen that in the two games that yes against like the Stirling Wolves who sadly are, are going through a bit of a, a rough patch, they can do it but against the very top teams they're just not quite there yet. Scott, Watsonians not finished yet, clever from Joe Reynolds who's arcing through, can Harriet stop him just, Reynolds off the deck to Cecil, Watsonians on the hunt for a fifth. Beresford on the hunt for a hat-trick, surely not. Scott. It's loose, but it's gathered cleanly, no knock-on. Scott protected by Skugel. Beresford had to hold that. He's got little Murdo McAndrew clinging to him like a, a flea on a rhinoceros. Scott. Wilson. Davis in there, and it is just lost forward in the tackle. Advantage over. Dan King hoofs Herriots out of bother. Pick up from Dominic Kutzer, South African born, free running utility back. Scott Lamberton. Swinning's flexing their muscles, using their fitness and their discipline to really stretch Herriots in the final throws. Tackle, guys, tackle, knee was down. It's a better hit on Lewis Berg. Scott Davis borrowing low. Ian Kenny almost giving the penalty. Watsonians survive and still they come again. Reynolds. Ambitious pass. All that was waiting there were a couple of water boys and the touch judge. And we can pause to take breath, Bruce. And with three and a half minutes to play, it's time to name your Foss Rock. Player of the match, who have you gone for this afternoon? Well, you and I had an interesting, brief, interesting conversation. The forward in me had three forwards circled here. I, I've enjoyed watching Carl Davis, the hooker today, and Louis Ball and Seb right. Cecil have, have been brilliant in those tight, those, you know, doing, doing the hard work that people often Four don't minutes. see. They've been good in the, in the line out, but we've gone for a back, and Lewis Berg is our. Forge Rock Super 6 player of the match. The Watsonians outside centre. He's got his side on the front foot with some big carries. He scored that try just before half time. Just out on the, it was early in the game, in fact, in the in the first half when he, he saw where the space was out on the right. So he's got great vision about him as well. He's not just a big ball carrier and some enormous collisions in defence as well. One in particular springs to mind on that stand side of the pitch when he bundled. One of the, the Herriot's players 
into touch. So a, a great performance. He'll be thanking his forwards tonight for their hard work. But uh, Lewis Berg is our Forge Rock Super 6 player of the match. Yeah, final round display from Lewis Berg. Typically dynamic and, and out of possession. A very handy operator for Watsonians to use. The visitors are going back to the top of the Fulls Rock Super 6 Championship table. They will move on to 15 points. Five clear of the Ayrshire Bulls, who will drop to second. And a further one ahead of Boroughmuir Bears, who were thrashed by the Bulls earlier today. 49 points to seven, that one finished. And their unbeaten run, Watsonians extend by another game. Best defensive record in the Championship as things stand. 47 points conceded across the opening nearly three matches now. And they have the best attack coming into round two, although that win for the Bulls has bumped them down and into the second by that metric, in. but <laughs> almost 100 points scored in just under three matches of Super 6 rugby, only 47 conceded. Those boosts are very encouraging numbers for Fergus Pringle and his coaching team. Yes, I mean, well, you can see why they have got the best defence in the competition. They're, they're so well organised there. And we spoke about the double hits, that the, the man on the outside just stepping in and, uh, and, and finishing off the, the tackle as often as they possibly can. And some huge collisions. I mean, they just throw their, their body into it uh, with very little regard for themselves. And likewise at the breakdown as well, the accuracy around there has impressed me like a today. It allows them to go through phases which really just puts teams under under pressure. If you, if you go through 10 or 12 phases, okay? I think they've done on the, a couple of occasions today, it's very, very hard to, to defend right, against. Guys. So, Time again, on. a very complete next. performance by Watsonians in that second half. If anything, we're going to be at all critical. It will be how do they find that edge in the first half. So it's a Harris line-out, and Linus, after a fashion, finds the gangling figure of Ronan Sadak at the tail. Ian Wilson still scrapping, still battling for every metre of Golden Acre turf. McLaren lined up really well in the tackle, and Heriots have been ransacked again. Irvin Hess is hunting down Fraser Jones, who does well to escape the big man's clutches, and off he goes. Eventually, hit with a big shoulder by a big forward. McLaren can't get away. Ball is loose. Watsonians have it through Beresford. Berg rips up. Low pass to Reynolds, who just knocks it in behind, and that will bobble into touch at the corner. And again, Heriot's unable to exit cleanly, unable to get hands on ball, unable to stress this Watsonian's defence. They just can't cope with the speed that the Watsonians are now sending up players in, in, in ones to put a huge amount of pressure on the ball carrier there. I think there was a tackle from, it was, it was guys that we've mentioned in our, came into our consideration for the, the player of the match, Seb Cecil, then Lewis Ball came out the line and made a, an enormous collision and Heritage just don't know where to go next. The turnover was one, Lewis Berg, again knew the space was out to his left, bounced a pass out there to Lee Miller, the captain, he decided that the kick through was the best option. So perhaps the last opportunity for Heritage to to land a punch. They're going to have to do it from 90 metres though. Into the final two minutes. And Houston back in the pocket and it's not a great kick. It's a bit slicey from the Northern Irishman. The Motsonians perhaps then can finish this game with the upper hand and finish it on the attack. As the final whistle draws near. And we talked up Bruce, uh, Bruce Houston, not his best clearance kick there, but he's just had nothing to work with whatsoever in this second half. And Watsonians already have their bonus point in the bag, that fourth Step try, in, please, and third Thank and you. fourth for Beresford. But I'm sure they would be happy to put the icing on the cake with a fifth. It's not quite worked out for them at set piece this time. Thanks, Sam, I got that, yeah. Angus Guthrie goes scrambling back, gets rid of two tacklers, <laughs> and then hands it on to Louis Ball, who's been an ever present, ever willing runner. Scott into Wilson. Flutting with the touchline, not quite making contact with it. Cal Davis, again, tireless carrier of ball. Really impressive engine on the hooker. Scott Miller at first receiver. Into Reynolds. Oh, 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 
Scott again asking the big man to run those hard yards, but Seb Cecil loses it in contact. So final 20 seconds or so, and we will have a Heriot scrum because there were a couple of knock-ons there. And it will be Heriot who finish with hands on ball. Any score now would be a consolation. They're out of losing bonus point range. A third try would not earn them a, a try bonus point either. So two matches against the big two for Heriots, against the Bulls and against Watsonians. And despite playing pretty well in both. Ready guys, come on, let's go. Anything from either. One more push. Let's go, Scoots, please. Let's go, Scoots. One more push. Let's go. One more push. Go on, Seb. Joe Reynolds has been good since he's come on as well for Watson. He's, he's a great player to be able to bring off your bench. Very clever player, yes. And a good boot him as well. See him just with the 22 jersey on in the centre of your, your screen there. Kind of classic New Zealander, isn't he, in that 10 12 mould? Very smart in what he does. Very good basic skills. So, Harriet's trying to finish with a flourish. Ross Jones away to Henry. Haven't really seen enough of him from a Heriot's point of view with ball in hand. And he will grow into this competition. McAndrew for Sadak. Again, is that Louis Ball flying out the line, just throwing his body at absolutely everything. He's been wonderful this afternoon, the big number four. You can see he's out on his feet. Knock on. Yeah, typically of the day for Heriot's. It's a knock on. Michael Lane is spilling. That is the last act of a frustrating second half for the Golden Acre side. Watsonians, the league leaders, reclaim top spot in emphatic fashion with three superbly worked second half tries. They're three from three in the new Fosh Rock Super Six Championship. They've got maximum points from each of those victories and they've triumphed against their old Edinburgh foes by 27 points to 12. Thanks, oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Well, that Bruce was a, a hugely a compelling game. second half display from Watsonians. Heriots will take heart from the fact that they were in the lead with well, 48, 49 minutes played until Loman McPherson cut them open and then Jamie Beresford's double sealing the deal and the bonus point for Watsonians. And the visitors today, Fergus Pringle will be very, very pleased with the way that they took command of that game, particularly in the last half hour after a difficult start. And they've shown over and over that they are by a mile the best second half team in the competition. Uh, Heriots, as you say, they, they will and they won't take something from the fact that they they led uh, 12 points to eight early in that second half because we, uh, we, we know that they can be competitive. They led at half time down at Milbrae against the Ayrshire Bulls. It's how do they find the, uh, the next step how do they compete with the teams like Watsonians, like the Ayrshire Bulls, who have, have dismantled them in the second half of games so far? How do they, how do they compete with them? And as I, I think it's very difficult to tell, but I, I think there's perhaps a, a, a fitness element to it that they, they, they just didn't have the, the same, uh, the same capacity as Watsonians did in that in that second half because they, they coped in the set piece as well. That was another area that we said if they want to compete at the very top of this league, they have to have a strong set piece, and they appear to have that in place now so um, there, is, there is definitely potential there for, for Heriots but they're not quite there yet and uh, Watsonians while not the finished article are a very very good side well let's take a look at the pick of the action from Golden Acre today a hard fought victory for Watsonians and they were off and running with just four minutes on the clock when Lee Miller banged over this close range penalty to open the scoring as you'd expect, clinically done from Miller. Lewis Berg, the player of the match, will see him getting his medal in just a minute or two. Finishing off this try, Bruce, again, cleverly done. You saw the carry there from Carl Davis, from Louis Ball, from Seb Cecil, the forwards that we've already mentioned, just putting in the hard work, getting their side on the front foot, sucking in that Heriot's defence. And now we see the carry from, uh, from uh, Lewis Berg. And he was slow getting up here. Let's see if you watch through another two or three phases. Lewis Berg is getting up now. He has a quick glance to his right, realises there's space, and just heads across there, bides his time. And he'll be communicating in all the time. And again, if you watch Harry Patterson, the 15 here, he just runs in. He's asking for the ball, but he's already saying to Lewis Berg that he's not going to get it. It's going to go behind him. And he just, you can see, he's shaping up to run in. He just drags in the, uh, the Heriot's defence there, which creates space out wide for Lewis Berg. So it's good work. 
and good communication between the, the full back, the scrum half and the outside centre. Yeah, very well done indeed. Lee Miller unsuccessful with a conversion attempt, but Heriots came rolling back just 10 minutes later. Jack Mann with a massive carry here and then Bruce Houston stabbing through for Dan King to score. A cracking try. That is Jack Mann at his very best there, just running hard in the midfield, but showing his footwork as well. Arkin on the outside, getting the front foot, and then as the, the Watsonians' defence came up, nobody at home at the back. And Bruce Houston, as we've seen so many times, has the, the vision, but also the, the accuracy from his boot to send that ball in behind. And Dan King, a wonderful pick-up at pace. Yeah, hard luck with Bruce Houston hitting the post there, but I tell you what, Heriot's had their tails up at this point. They trailed by eight points to five at half-time, and then Jack Mann did this. Wow. Well, we said they wanted to get the ball into his hands in the wide channels. I mean, look at the pace there. He's up against the, the backs, and that's what a good number eight. Our good back row players that we often see out in the, the wide channels nowadays, that's what they can do for you. They're fast, but they're very, very difficult to uh, to bring down, and uh, it was a shame that we lost Jack Mann. I'm not saying it would have changed the changed the, the score line at the end, but uh, they would be disappointed to lose him. Yeah, as individual scores go, though, anything Heriots can do, what Sonians can do just as well, Loma McPherson with a belter. That was superb and I think came from the, the line out, a lovely little inside ball and uh, he's still an awful lot to do to get himself over that try line. Good strength, good pace by the right wing. And then we had a double from the marauding second row, Jamie Beresford, the first one made by this Carl Main break. Yes, well Carl Main giving the, the scoring pass but it was Rory Brand that saw where the space was and it's not getting their defence right at all at ruck time. He went through and uh, Carl Main just drawing the last man, giving it to Jamie Beresford who... Could not believe his luck yeah, as he the, the got another one, one shortly here, after. Bruce, yeah, Louis Ball with a, a lovely sort of leap and offload to release Beresford here and that was the bonus point try with eight minutes to play. Yeah, Ball getting his hands on the ball. He had done a lot of hard graft this afternoon. You could see he really was out on his feet at the end. He just charged into contact there. Ball in one hand and a lovely offload to Beresford. Yeah, the big second row off the bench. Rumbling over for two tries and those were the tries that sealed the victory and brought up the bonus point for Watsonians Rugby. That leaves the weekend scorecard looking like this, a much-needed victory for Southern Knights against fellow strugglers Sterling Wolves down at Bridgehawk on the Friday night free sports match a couple of nights ago. Ayrshire Bulls bouncing back from defeat to Watsonians with a thumping victory over previously unbeaten Boromir Bears. And then Watsonians making it three from three, maximum points on the board, with that 27 points to 12 triumph over Heriots. So this then is how things stand with three rounds of Foss Rock Super 6 Championship Rugby now done and dusted. As I said, Watsonians top the table with maximum points, a bonus point win in their opening three matches and they sit pretty on 15 from a possible 15. Ayrshire Bulls and Buttermere Bears tucked in behind them Heriot's Rugby taking nothing against the big two, still down in fourth place. But this is our player of the match, Lewis Berg, taking his very well-earned medal from Captain Lee Miller. A really impressive afternoon for, for Berg. Bruce, a last word on his performance today. Yes, well, he has everything. He's, I think most people would think of him just as a hard-running centre, and he certainly does that. He, the, the launches from the line-out, he will carry hard for you, but he's got he's got good hands, he's got good vision, as we saw from his tries, he, as he crept out to the, the right wing there, and, and defensively, he is absolutely solid. And his captain, Lee Miller, his, uh, his midfield partner today, they combined very well. Miller normally playing at... Uh, that standoff and, and Watsonians, what a great start to the season. You're already getting a sense that the, there's perhaps a gap in quality between the top two and the and the rest, although only a point between the Ayrshire Bulls and, and Boromir Bears in third. We saw the, the, the real gap on the, the pitch this weekend, and they are definitely the, the two sides that the other four have to uh, aspire to match. It's a marathon, not a sprint, as we always say, and uh, it's it's early days, but uh, already we're seeing the, uh, the, the two front runners. Absolutely. Well, the Foss Rock Super 6 Championship now in full swing and round four begins next Friday. Milbury, the venue, free sports and the SRU's YouTube channel. The broadcast outlet for that one, and it is a clash of the titans so far. The big two, as Bruce was saying, meeting under the floodlights at Milbury. That will be a belter. Air Shabools against Watsonians to kick off round four. Then it's Bottom Your Bears against Southern Knights, who will be buoyed with that first win of the season at Bridge Hall last night, 
before Heriot's Rugby eager to bounce back with a victory of their own against Stirling Wolves. Remember, a team they defeated just seven days ago. So plenty Super 6 rugby to look forward to over the coming weekends. Do not miss that phenomenal showdown on Friday night as second host first, the Bulls and Watsonians. But for right now, it is Watsonians who are sitting pretty at the top of the table. Another victory for Fergus Pringle's men. Another bonus point in the bag. Who can stop them? Thanks for watching. We'll find out soon.